In this video, we're going to go over the union command and the union all. The union command combines the results of two or more select statements, returning only distinct values, and the union all returns all the records for the following query. So the syntax for a union statement is select column names from table one and union select column names from table two. So here I have an example of a union statement and I've already run it and I got back some results. So let's just look at these tables first, how they originally return data. So here I had a sales order and it says subtotal. And so I've combined the sales order header table and sales order detail table. So I've combined the sales order ID and the sales order ID from the detail table. And then I've combined the subtotal and the line total with this table. Now, in this previous query, you see that subtotal was the column header name. And the first query in your results will determine the column name for your query when you're using a union. So whatever you name the item in the first query, all the following queries will return the same name. So I could change this one to as ID. And it'll change that column to ID. Now, um, a couple of things you want to be aware of when you're running a union. Of course, you want all your items from the two tables to relate to each other somehow. And if you happen to use a mismatch, like I will the second query to carry a tracking number. And I get an error. And that's because these two column types do not match. So when you're writing a union statement, you need to make sure that your column items are of the same data type and they should actually make sense to be combining anyways. Now let's try another example or run another. So here we're, we're combining currency code of two different tables. And we get 105 rows. So now we're going to use a union all. And we get 13,637 rows. So we got this because When we run these two tables, there's 13,637 rows. The currency table has 105 rows, and the currency rate has 13,532 rows. So the union all is, is bringing back combining everything, and the union is just getting the distinct values between the two tables. So this union is really used to know unique values between two tables. Now, if you're writing a statement with multiple union statements, let's go over an example. So 
when I'm union table one to table two with a regular union, I am having distinct. Now let's say I add another table union all and this is table three I'm adding all the values of table three and let's say I add another table union table four I'm only adding distinct Now let's start over. Say I start a union all as a first union. So I'm adding all of table two. And if I add another table to this union statement, but I use a union for table three, I'm adding distinct values from three, table three. So this first query, I would, table two, I'm adding everything from table two, and table three, it's only adding distinct values to what's the combination from table one and table two. So sometimes you're going to be writing a union statement with multiple unions. Usually, you're, well, a good percentage of the time, you're going to be just using a union, but there's times where you'll be using a union all, and you need to understand how that works with the rest of your results set. So, I, I mean, a union null is usually just going to add all of it, all of your result sets from a table. But if you decide to add another union to a result set, then the order of where the union is placed after a union null will make a difference as far as what you're bringing back. So, let's say you want to have a table where you're getting all the results, you want all the results to return, you want to have that union all earlier in your query, and then maybe have your unions after that union all, so you're checking for duplicates if you just want to have distinct values from a certain table. So that's just important to remember when you're writing your union statement. And again, so your first, you need to remember your first table will be naming your union. So you could change the name. And, and change the columns according to your first table that you bring in. And all your data types need to match. So again, this query, we had data type that didn't match. So let's run this query one more time and just show an example of how the union takes away duplicates. In this table, the sales order header table, the subtotal represents all of the line items for sales order detail table. Okay. So all the sales order detail line items for four, three, six, five, nine should match the subtotal for four, three, six, five, nine. When we run this query normally with the line total,
we get back 132,354 rows. So we're just taking back all of the line items and in a sales order detail table. But let's say we want to make sure all the line items match the subtotal in the header table. So we would sum this line total Could it add subtotal just for reference? And we're going to group by sales order ID. And we execute. And now we get 32,160 rows. And now we actually get back one result for each ID. Now let's see if there's any places where let's look for any any um, totals that are off. So how we would do that? We're gonna write a subquery. We're going to turn this one into a subquery. So we're going to select ID. And we're going to count that ID. Let's count and ID. We're going to group. Group by the ID. And order by C and T descending. And so now we can see all of the results where we have duplicate records. So these would be some records we want to look into to see why their totals are off. Because there should be just one record returning for each line total. And that's how you use unions and we added a little extra part for um, troubleshooting, but this is the basic syntax to use a union.